Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hello, Warren Farrell. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here today. How are you? I'm doing really well despite the um, COVID, right? <laughs> yes. Right now we are recording this. We had a bit of uh, technical difficulty getting on up here, but Skype came to the rescue and we're here today to talk about your wonderful book, The Boy Crisis. I thought it was a fascinating topic and book. Uh, you don't even realize there is a, a problem, but you, you found that there's something that could be addressed and uh, make lives better for everyone, families and boys and girls and everyone. So share with our audience first what even brought you to writing your book the boy crisis well i started out my career in the 70s um and the late 60s actually um being deeply involved with the women's movement i was on the board of directors of the national organization for women in new york city spoke mm-hmm. all around the world on behalf of the importance of women being involved with businesses mm-hmm. and um and being able to uh, spend as much of their life as they wish to to um, scale a corporate ladder, break a glass ceiling. Uh, this was before the word glass ceiling was invented, and so we were very, um, I was very supportive of that. And then um, during the 70s, I began to see the divorces increase a great deal. Mm-hmm. And um, with those divorces, I started to see the original research or some of the early research that showed that the children of divorce were having problems. But then as I looked more deeply into that research, I saw it wasn't all the children of divorce that were having problems. It was particularly the boys that had minimal or no father involvement after divorce that uh-huh. were having problems. And then I started seeing that uh, these boys were doing worse in this area than that area. And ultimately, I was able to detect more than 50 different developmental areas from suicide to depression to uh-huh. addiction to video games to addiction to porn um, to, uh, to to the boys not doing well in school, not doing doing well emotionally, not knowing, being aggressive but not assertive, not having empathy, Mm. um, being disobedient. um, Mm. And so, and, you know, I started looking at, you know, what's the, you know, what's the common denominators? And again and again, I found that the single most powerful of the 10 most important um, causes uh, was that that the boy crisis resides basically where dads do not reside. Mm. So I was seeing it wasn't all boys of divorce. Yeah. It was mostly the boys and girls of divorce who had minimal or no father involvement. Yeah. And it wasn't all the children being raised by single mm. moms, but it was the, particularly the children being raised by single moms where the, they either the children didn't know who the dad was mm. or the children knew who the dad was, but he was minimally or uh, in, his, in the children's life. Mm-hmm. Or alternatively, uh, the mother and father were living together, but not married when the child was born. But those relationships only lasted an average of three years. And so many of the children, especially the boys, felt abandoned by their dad. Mm. And I started to see that the impact on boys was a lot worse than it was on girls. That It mm-hmm. was a negative impact on girls in almost all mm-hmm. 50 of the developmental areas that uh, was true for boys, but that the intensity of that impact was much greater for boys. So, for example, mm-hmm. now, this, wh- yeah, wh- why do you think uh, boys in particular from are are affected more than girls? I would think both of them. Why? Why? Because I think a father figure is important for both males and females. Mm-hmm. It is definitely important for both girls and and boys, and and boy and girls are negatively affected in more than these fifty developmental areas. Also, yeah. but so for uh, but boys, um, girls at least have with a single mother a same sex role model and and they have much more social permission to cry express their feelings say what's bothering them so the mother can identify that or the guidance counselor or the, the not the guidance counselor but the therapist in in college let's say mm-hmm. uh, 75% of people that visit um, therapists reporting suicidal ideations in college are females uh, 25% are males but mm-hmm. 75% of the suicides in college are males and wow. so, so you get so women tend to report their problems. Men tend to repress their problems, and so that makes it even worse for for boys than than it is for girls. And so I started seeing that you know, for example, boys and girls at the age of nine, they r- rarely commit suicide, and they um, and they commit suicide at equal um, rates to each other. 
between the ages of 10 and 14, mm -hmm. the rate for our sons is double the rate for our daughters. Mm -hmm. Between the ages of 15 and 19, it's quadruple the rate for our daughters. Between the ages of 20 and 25, it is five times the rate for our daughters. Wow. Then it then it levels out to four uh, four times, mm -hmm. but then as men and women get much older, uh, the rate soars for men. So for men and women over 85, um, the suicide rate for our grandfathers is 1,750% more uh, frequent than it is for our grandmothers. Uh, because, you know, males, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious, because now you're an adult, why would, when you're, you know, at that point, you're an advanced adult, you think, and you wouldn't have any issues from not having a dad that's like so far down in the past. Why, why does that impact you so much as an adult? Yes, you, you uh, oftentimes boys that don't, that, that don't have a lot of father involvement, they, they have, um, they don't have a sense of purpose. Beyond, um, beyond traditional senses of purpose, and the traditional senses of purpose have shifted a great deal. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for example, in in history, um, every generation had its war, and in every generation's war, both mothers, fathers, society, girlfriends, everybody said, you know, if you go off to that war and you risk being disposable in war, um, your disposability would lead you to be called a hero, mm -hmm. and so we gave you a social bribe, if you will, to be disposable. Um, and we called that masculinity. And so the bad news was that many, many more males were disposable. The good news was that these men felt a sense of purpose uh, with, with each generation. Now a much smaller percentage of boys and young men are needed for war. Um, so we have a much smaller percentage of males that have that purpose. But you know, the good news is that fewer have to die. The bad news is that there's a purpose void. And what I discovered when I did the research for the boy crisis is that the that when you have a purpose void <clears throat> combined with a dad void, wow. that's yeah. when the boy feels like <clears throat> his testosterone his testosterone does not get channeled well and um, and with a, a, a purpose, mm -hmm. and it doesn't get channeled with postponed gratification. That is, dads are far more likely than moms to um, dads and moms both express unconditional love for their children. Yeah. But, but moms are more likely to have unconditional love with close to unconditional approval. Mm -hmm. Dads are more, much more likely to have unconditional love with much more conditional approval. Mm -hmm. Sweetie, I know, you, I know you got straight A's, <clears throat> but you haven't been turning your papers in. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not okay. You know, mm -hmm. oh, what are you complaining about? He's gotten straight A's. Yeah. Um, you know, it would be a more likely a difference. And then so the, the children with, with da uh, without dads mm -hmm. tend to have less discipline. They have less mm -hmm. sense of purpose. Uh, therefore, their, le their smaller amount of discipline Mm -hmm. leads to less ability to have postponed gratification, oh, which wow. means less ability to, to succeed in school, succeed on the basketball team, succeed in whatever dr their dream is. Mm -hmm. And then they become, the, the males in particular, start to become ashamed of themselves. And then when they are interested in girls, they notice that girls are not very interested in dating losers. Yeah, uh, they yeah. tend to date winners. And mm -hmm. so then the guys feel rejected. So they turn to porn. They mm -hmm. get addicted to the porn. The addiction to the porn um, makes them feel like they, they don't have any type of real ability to uh, be attractive to women, which then mm -hmm. gets them more addicted to porn and so on. And so this is just a few, uh, this is just one of the 50 developmental areas uh, that males, that, that are creating the boy crisis. Wow. And now I'm wondering, you had mentioned here the void of purpose leads to a whole bunch of problems, including behavioral. Does it also sometimes lead to violence and, and making decisions that probably aren't the best in your life? Yes, two things. Um, it, so when I did a study of the, um, uh, of the school shooters, uh, we found that 100% um, of the school shooters in, um, in the 21st century who killed 10 or more people were fatherless boys. Well, we look at the prison population, you see, of course, 93% males, but th that most people know. But what they don't know is that most of those 93% males, about 90% of those 93% males, um, are, are males who are without fathers. Yeah. I, the ISIS recruits, fee, three female study, uh, three female sociologists studied ISIS recruits, and they, and they 
told them each other afterwards, huh, a lot of my group happened to mention that they didn't have much of a father involvement. Wow. All three female sociologists said, yeah, that came up in my group too, but they hadn't even asked that question. So they mm -hmm. went back and asked that question and found out that that was the single greatest predictor of joining wow. ISIS because they didn't have purpose and ISIS gave them a sense of purpose. And yeah. even though that purpose was destructive, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and we saw this with Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve Chair. He, mm -hmm. said, um, he said on 60 Minutes um, uh, some months ago mm -hmm. uh, that when you look at the economic, the business future and capacity of America, it is threatened by two potential crises. One is cyber warfare, and number two is boys' lack of, uh, basically the boy crisis. Boys wow. not doing well economically. And boys aren't doing well economically when those boys don't have fathers, mm -hmm. then they're more likely to drop out of high school. Yeah. The ones yeah. that drop out of high school, 20 plus percent unemployment in their early 20s. Mm -hmm. And obviously that unemployment leads to destructive rather than constructive behavior. Yeah. Almost all your crimes are committed by these fatherless boys. Wow. And again, yeah. fatherlessness is only one of 10 causes of the boy crisis, but it is by yeah. far the biggest, the, the biggest um, cause. And you know what's interesting I'm hearing from you, Dr. Uh, Farrell, is that this doesn't just affect boys. This affects our entire culture and society because if boys are having an issue, if they can't rise to the table, feel purpose, and feel reason for even living, forget about being uh, doing behaviors that might not be beneficial to themselves and society, this will hurt the entire country and the entire world. It's a much bigger issue than just hitting boys. You are absolutely right. Mm -hmm. um, the um, So, for example... Uh, when uh, between my marriages, I was um, single for a while, and mm -hmm. every, every I found I soon found that the more mature women, people who, who the more mature females were were women who had children, and so I dated a number of women that had children, but the word that was used by these women with children, single mothers, was almost always the word overwhelmed. I'm just overwhelmed. I can't do business well, I can't do the kids well, I feel like a failure, I'm exhausted all the time. Um, you know, I'd love to have sex with you, but sorry. I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. And so I didn't really mean, uh, mean to say that, but yeah. anyway. No, no, it's, it's true, right. it's real life, it's real yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but was so, so, yeah, go on. So the, the women are overwhelmed who are single mothers the fathers feel without purpose and disregard discarded and the children are are feeling like they they don't they don't have the discipline to achieve their dreams uh, they're they're losing in every academic area boys all around the world in the most 50 developed countries uh, the 56 most developed countries boys in all of those countries are doing worse than girls in every single academic subject but especially in reading and writing which are the two biggest predictors of success or failure. Uh, they're doing worse economically, they're doing worse psychologically, that you mentioned the, you know, the anger and the violence. The anger and the violence is far, you can imagine the school shooters, uh, look, go, going back on that, they're, they're, they don't have the discipline, they're failing in school, they dropped out, they're sh ashamed of themselves, they're angry at their teachers, angry at their parents mm -hmm. for respecting the other, um, you know, the other brother or sister better, like East of Eden. Yeah. Uh, they, they go ahead and they feel really um, um, badly about women because they, they're told by their mothers that women love sensitive men, but they find that that's really not true unless the man is successful and then sensitive, right? <laughs> um, and so the, um, you know, the Lois Lane fell in love with the, um, um, not with Clark Kent, but with Superman. And then once she fell in love with Superman, she wanted Superman to express his feelings, but she didn't give a darn about what Clark Kent did or didn't express. And so, Isn't that yeah, interesting? We don't think about that. It's true. Uh, yeah. It's totally true. Now, you know what I'm getting here that is probably missing. Now, I grew up with a family that had some issues, um, violence and, and such. But we had mo I had most of my childhood had both parents. And even mm -hmm. though it was dysfunctional, having the both parents there, I, I felt like I came out better than my brother and sister, who later on when my dad and mom got divorced, my youngest brother and sister who were born only after I was 14, they suffered and had a much more difficult childhood and then moving into adulthood than I did. And so this brings to point the traditional traditionality of family and how it's kind of like, well, you know, you don't have to do the boy male thing. You know, we don't need a, a male and a female in the house. We could just mix it up and do whatever we want or just have 
a woman just run everything. And as you know, I'm starting to hear here that there's nothing, you know, the, the, the back to the traditionality and the actual family unit isn't such a bad thing. We both have our gifts, the male energy and the female energy to bring to the table to help our kids grow. Absolutely correct. And this is what I found. And this is, of course, got me in trouble with the feminist movement uh, because, you know, I was, um, you know, you know I, I believe I was the leading male feminist in the world and was speaking on, on these issues purely from a feminist perspective. And, uh, you know, if women want to, women should be able to be free to do what they want to do. And, but I started to see that, um, yes, women should be free what they want to do, what they wish to do. But when, they, if they make the free choice to have children, then they make the free choice to say, the ch my children's lives are the most important thing in my life. I don't yeah. have to make that choice. I can yeah. focus on business or do whatever I wish to do. But yeah. once I make that choice, with that free choice comes responsibilities. Yeah. And so then I started to see that the children with mothers and fathers did so much better, especially the boy children. Mm -hmm. And so, and I started mentioning to the, this to my board members in the National Organization for Women in New York City. And they looked at me like, you know, well, wait a minute, Warren, this is going to interfere with women's freedom to be able to do what they want to do. And mm -hmm. I said, don't you want the next generation of girls as well as boys to turn out well? And, you know, I said that we know we're all in the same family boat mm -hmm. when either when only one sex wins, both sexes lose. Mm -hmm. You know, we want our daughters to have men who are worthy of their love to marry. Mm -hmm. Daughters don't marry losers. If men become losers, your daughters are going to be single, not by choice, but single by by um, mm -hmm. sort of lack of choice, if you yeah. and so <laughs> yeah. and they sort of agreed with that on one hand, but they said, "Gee, we can't afford. We have we have a lot of fish to fry here politically. We have you know equal mm -hmm. pay and violence against women, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. and we have to fry, fry all these fish. We need the largest membership possible. We cannot afford to uh, to come come out in favor of, um, um, of reducing the choices that some of our women have." And so that's where I began to break with the uh, feminist movement. And even yeah. though I was more politically liberal, it was the um, um, Republicans that were saying, we have been saying for years uh, that the family is important and fathers are an important part of that family. Yeah. And fathers are definitely not the only important thing. My, my research for the boy crisis found that um, that the children that did best are ones that, call, that had what I call checks and balance parenting. Where, so for example, um, a child approaches a mom and says, mom, can I climb the tree in the backyard? And mom goes, well, maybe in a few years, honey, but not right now. And dad goes, you know, dad asks separately, goes, yeah, be careful though. And yeah. uh, and then mom and dad find out that the other one has said the opposite. And, you know, the child, you know, gets caught. And so then mom and dad get into a big discussion, like, you know, what do you want to do? You, this child could fall and get a concussion and mm -hmm. be ruined for life. And the dad goes, but, you know, if you protect the child completely, uh, they won't be able to develop the, um, you know, the intellectual power of being able to de decide what decisions to are, are risk appropriate with what decisions are in. They get yeah. into a big argument and maybe the mom and dad go, okay, I'll tell you what, uh, with the, the child can climb the tree, but not be on this level, not these branches. And dad, you've got to be out there under the tree and take it to cushion the child's fall if, if the child does fall. And by the way, give me the cell phone. Uh, so, <laughs> and so, and so that, so the, ch the parents, if they don't understand what's going on, may think that they're just parents that are bad parents because if I only married a woman or a man that thought differently like I did, yeah. no. It's really important that you're that the that the mom thinks the way the mom thinks and the dad thinks of the way they think, and you negotiate a win-win situation so the child gets the ability to climb that tree, um, but also gets the ability to, uh, which by the way, very few dads understand uh, that climbing that tree will increase the child's IQ, the the child's ability to make the the synapses start mm -hmm. firing that make decisions as to what risk is worth taking, what risk isn't worth taking, uh, requiring a type of intelligence that the child didn't have before um, yeah. that, that of course gets transplanted into adult life where you yeah. learn automatically to make those types of decisions um, more perfectly and yeah. so these and so so the the so so important it is uh, that I find the families that do the best not only have checks and balance parenting mm -hmm. but they have they know the guidelines for family dinner nights that prevent family dinner, that allow family dinner nights to be consistent, but prevent family dinner nights from becoming family dinner nightmares. And mm. 
I found this so important that the, uh, you know, the first appendix of the Boy Crisis book is completely about how to structure a family dinner night wow. so that it becomes successful, so the children are more excited to have dinners with the yeah. family than they are to have their electronics at the table, so that the, that the parents learn how to listen to the children, not interrupt and lecture the children, mm. so that the children know how to listen to the parents um, because they've already been listened to. And it's not an argument, it's, an, it's, 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 um, it's the ability to hear different points of view without feeling that one has to triumph. Um, over the other. And yeah, so yeah. there's so many things that need to be done on a family level, on mm -hmm. a school level. The children that go from female only homes mm -hmm. to female adult only schools, mm -hmm. um, they are there without role models. Um, sorry, yeah. males that go from female only homes to female only schools are without male role models. And yeah. they're the yeah. ones that are attracted to gang leaders and drug dealers who are authoritarian personalities who will say you, but you'll belong to this gang. You'll feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. You'll belong uh, to something greater than yourself. That's what we're looking for. Something exactly. to make a change. Yeah. And what you mentioned here about having a check and balance household is that now the kids get to see the two parents in negotiation. You, you then learn the skills of negotiation, what it looks like. And also for themselves, how would I negotiate later on for myself and in dealings I might have with the public and and here's the thing I think the now association was missing, the, the feminist organization you were working with was missing, is that when you come at it from this perspective, you're not losing feminist power, you're gaining it because with responsibility, you actually are empowered. Uh, so I when you begin to look at responsibility, it's not, oh, you're taking away stuff from me because now I can't do all the things I want. Everything you do in life will have a consequence. And actually, if you come at it from a perspective of responsibility, you're actually empowering yourself. Totally. First mm -hmm. of all, really empowering women mm -hmm. is having women be happy mm -hmm. and have, and you know, so many women that I've worked with, uh, they say, oh, I want to be a habit all woman. It's mm -hmm. not fair that men can be habit all men and that women can't be habit all women. Mm -hmm. And I go, actually, you can be a habit all woman. You can be a habit all woman by focusing on your career and finding a man the type of man who wants to focus on raising children. But in order to be a have-it-all woman and be happy, you have to respect the man who wants to raise children full-time. Because mm -hmm. if you don't respect him, he'll feel your lack of respect, and that will lead to a divorce. Um, yeah, but, if yeah. you, but if you respect and want and choose for a man at a party, for example, when you choose a man, don't choose a man who's the dominant player at the party, the future doctor. Mm -hmm. Choose a man who knows how to listen, who knows how to draw out a woman, who mm -hmm. knows how to draw you out, um, who's who's secure enough internally uh, to be able to be a nurturer if that's also his personality. Mm -hmm. Choose and fall in love with that man, and you will then find that he'll be appropriate for raising your children, secure enough to do that, as yeah. long yeah. as he knows you love him. Yeah. And so, you know, so that is an example of, you know, what I would say to my feminist friends. Um, and, and some of them, you know, a number just poo pooed yeah. it, but some did take me up on that and married men that they're very happy with raising children that, um, you know, where the man is focused more on raising the children, but the woman is free um, to, to move up the corporate ladder. Yeah. And I, I actually know someone like that. They have two wonderful children and it worked out for them. The the man loves staying home with the kids. It worked out very well. And she's, I believe, an attorney. And uh, they made this partnership and agreement before they got married. And, and that's one thing that's important is actually lay it down on the table ahead of time before yeah. you even decide to do the marriage or getting together. Because now you have everything worked out. The agreement is you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. We're not like you know, walking down the aisle and then later on going, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that, and then change mm -hmm. things later on, both feel yeah. jilted at the, oh, I got to stay home with the kids and I didn't want to do that. Yes, yes, yeah. absolutely. And there, and there, by the way, if, if, if this version of the world, um, if this source, this source of options is of interest to you, take a real careful read about um, if you're single, what are the signals of the type of woman or man that will be willing to or to, to do this? Where is the gap between the theory and the practice? How do you discern that before you get married? Um, what are, you know? Are, are you? What are the signs of a of some a partner being flexible so that in case the you know a, a man or woman loses a job, mm -hmm. they, you know they know how to row from both sides of the family boat. 
Um, and so the, there are so many dimensions of this that are yeah. that are so that are so important. I'm working with the White House now to try to um, get them to to talk. I've done a first draft of a uh, potential presentation for President Trump to make on Father's Day if the coronavirus disappears enough to be able to I focus so. on that. And the um, and you know one of one of the things that I'm talking with um, with them about mm -hmm. is the creation of a father warrior program where we're saying to to men be a different type of warrior than you were in the past mm -hmm. instead of being instead of being trained to kill and be killed um, now we need men to love and be loved at home yeah. and yeah. as well as as well as to kill and be killed as well as to be the traditional hero but we need also to add respect for men mm -hmm. who are a different type of hero to the family yes i love that you mentioned this uh, Dr. Farrell, because I recall recently, I don't watch TV. I don't own a TV, but I recently really? went on it. No, I don't. Yeah, for quite a while, I haven't owned a TV. But we went on a holiday recently, and I was in the hotel, and we shifted on the, the TV. And the commercials, whoa. I, and some of the, the, the things I watched, there was so much disrespect towards men. And the male... To masculinity, and and they're calling oh toxic. Ma these are just men being men, and they were kind of in these commercials and these shows, kind of teasing men about being male. And I was like, well, what is wrong with these people? It was like just being a man or being manly was like wrong or evil, and let's make fun of them, and and then let's make women more manly. Ooh, yes. and I'm like, I'm like, dude, what's wrong with just being feminine? I like being feminine. I like dressing up and makeup and going out and being feminine. But it's like some of these stereotypes are almost being portrayed on on programming aka tv as a means of being wrong so let's let's do this propaganda tv shows and commercials to show people that we can switch roles or, or make fun of men and not be men and have women be men when yes. no you're a woman and that's totally awesome and if you're a little bit more climbing tree that's awesome too that's what you like to do but hey if you're a man that likes to be nurturing cool also but if you're a man that's masculine and wants to go and chop wood that's also okay absolutely absolutely we need we we need every type of man and woman, and we yeah. do need you know where where I think the political liberals are are right, is that we 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 need to allow both men and women to to, to discover themselves, to find out what their unique self is, yeah. and if the if the man is more nurturing, reward that. If the man is more a firefighter or a future military person, reward that. The same with the women in reverse, Absolutely. and so that's where that openness to becoming who you are that is the privilege that we have as a result of our parents and our grandparents having gotten us to the level where survival is not so dominant historically speaking we did not uh, what i explained in the boy crisis book is that it was not that we were we were controlled by a patriarchy we were controlled rather by the need to survive and, 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 and the patriarchy did not make rules to benefit men at the expense of women. Um, it may um, the need to survive led to roles that led to men being willing to die so women would live, and it, die, being willing to create laws that require males to register for the draft at the age of eighteen. The, that law, which exists today, um, is is still. Um, is not about male privilege. It's about male responsibility and male sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so we have boys going through school who are seeing on the one hand, the future is female. And then secondly, you know, I have to register for the draft at age 18. But if I register for the draft at age 18 and my female friend does not register, I'm told I have male privilege. And then, um, and then women are more interested in me if I earn more money, and especially they want me to earn money if they have children, and they want the option to raise the children or raise money to do some combination of both. But I'm expected to raise the money, so I have to give up my teaching, which I love to do, because it doesn't pay as much as being a principal or a superintendent of schools, or I have to give up being um, a musician because I don't get enough gigs to support my wife and three children. Yeah. Um, and so, and then... So as a result of giving up those gigs and selling insurance, which pays more money than um, being a musician, I'm earning more money. And now I'm blamed for earning more money when, in fact, I sacrifice the things I love to do, the things that were fulfilling for me to yeah. earn more money. So these are the dilemmas that our sons are in. They say, And then they see the commercials that you were just describing. And those commercials are showing every dad is a, a bumbling fool or Idiot. so on. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It, so on. I was like, what is this? <laughs> and, and so, you know, what do you expect a boy to, to say? What can I do? You know, if, if, I, if I earn money, I'm accused of having the power. If I don't earn money, women are, uh, I'm invisible to women. Um, if, I, if I move too quickly um, sexually, um, I'm a, a, a date rapist or I've uh, violated affirmative consent. If I don't move quickly enough, I'm called a wimp. Um, if I make sure of myself by um, asking the woman to sign a piece of paper saying, is it okay for me to kiss you now? And she signs it saying yes. She looks at me like there's something wrong with me. Um, which, it's like you're in a no-win situation. And this is 16, 15, 14-year-old boys who are biologically less mature than the females they're interested in. And so it's sort of like, so we're yeah. asking the less mature sex to do all these risks uh, when the more mature sex uh, who has less interest in sex and therefore has the power um, is, is, is not expected to do this. And so, yeah. and, and boys don't express their feelings and talk about these things. And so you can imagine what's going on that leads to boys committing suicide. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, I, when I grew up, now my dad was very tough on all of us. He used to say, if I hurt my foot, you got another one, use that. Now you do that to both my brother and myself. But I did recall that he was, they were tougher on my brother about, you know, showing his feelings. So we're kind of conditioned, you're a boy, stop crying. And, you know, whereas my dad would say, you're, you're, you hurt your foot, use your other one to both of us. He would not like him or he would get hard on my brother if he expressed upset or crying, yeah. that type of thing, where yeah. it was okay for a girl. So you're making it a no-win situation for boys, and it's not helpful to anyone. So yeah, I really hope this opens up the dialogue for everyone listening in to think differently and open your mind to how we might help each, all of the, all of ourselves, as you said, be our best potential, grow, and see how we can help our kids grow to our fullest potential and not be stuck in boxes. Yes. Get rid of the boxes. No more boxes. <laughs> well, I have to thank you, Dr. Farrell, for coming today to share your great wisdom and your book, The Boy Crisis. I really appreciate it. Where can they get a copy today? Uh, Amazon is the least expensive place. And, of course, the um, if you have a bit more money uh, than going to a local bookstore. And I have to say um, that I... Um, the audible version of the book is getting extraordinary uh, response, um, I, I, much more so than I had ever expected. Um, and so um, I, I spent five days in studio reading it, and um, and and John Gray, the co-author of a portion of the book, um, sp you know, read his portion of it as well. And people are responding, uh, driving or you know, uh, listening to it on a mm -hmm. machine. Um, they're really responding very well to the audible version. That's great. So you've got many options. Not everyone is, uh, their time is usually really rapid right now. Not so much, but, uh, you know, uh, when you're on to work or going to work or exercising, great time to read uh, or listen to your book. And I thank you for coming to Savvy Broadcast to just share your great wisdom today. Thank you. Oh, I, I loved um, being interviewed by you. You're such a good question asker and you, um, you have such a vibrancy to you. So thank you. Thank you. If you like this episode, please share. To hear more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to lifeunscriptedradio.com. To become a guest or participate in paid sponsorship, email us at christinalifeunscriptedradio.com.